Okay, we talked about extreme values, maximums, minimums, where they occur. We talked about the definition of what a critical point is. Okay, critical point is a point uh, in the domain, in the interior of the domain, so not the end points of the domain, at which f prime is zero or where f prime doesn't exist. The idea is that the idea is that if we have some kind of a function here, even if it's in yellow, <coughs> let me try and draw that again. The extreme values are going to occur where the derivative is zero or where it's undefined. Okay, there's no there's no derivative here, right? It could be could be anything. This the right hand derivative of this is some positive number and the left hand derivative is or the right hand derivative is some negative number, the left hand derivative is some positive number. Here the derivative is zero. Critical points are where the derivative is zero or where it's undefined. All critical points don't have to be extreme values because you could have something like that. The derivative here is zero, but it's not an extreme value. It's not a max or min. And you could have something like that where the derivative is undefined there, but it's not an extreme value. That's kind of what we're the point we're at right now. We looked at a few different cases and found the extreme values using some algebra by finding the derivative, making it equal to zero, and the solving it. We got a bit sidetracked in making a quadratic formula program one day. Uh, you can always check things graphically. Please understand that you can check your answers two, you know, two different ways by looking at the graph and just confirming that that the connection between the two of them there. You guys did this one. We looked at this one together here, and that's where we were last time. This one, you looked at each piece separately and then look for extreme values or look for critical points in those pieces. And you found this part that's a parabola here, that part, there's one critical point in there where the derivative is zero there. So that's a, that's a potential maximum there. Um, I think what we did, we did that right here. The derivative of that 5 minus 2x squared is negative 4x. You find that there's one critical point there. We don't know at this point how to test, like without the picture, if we didn't have the picture, we don't know how to test what this is, a max, a min, or nothing. We will get to that soon. Um, but for now, that's the one critical point that you find from this piece. This piece has no critical points because the derivative is never equal to zero and it's never undefined. Uh, more or less, most of the way you can get a derivative that's undefined is if we have a function that has a denominator that equals zero or the absolute value function has that one point if it involves that, or where two functions join together like this, if it's a piecewise function. If, the, if you have a piecewise function, you have to test in between the values or in between the two pieces to see if that's where it's undefined. The only way to do that analytically is to look at the right-hand derivative and the left-hand derivative and show that they're not the same and then it's undefined. So that was a lot of work that we did, but that was kind of a good review actually of that from Chapter 3 is finding the left-hand derivative. And the right, or that was the left-hand derivative. That's the right-hand derivative. And we sh we figured out that they're what we expected, negative four and one. Um, well, a function. So this is kind of a summary, I guess. I like making fill in the blanks where I've made them all blanks and they could mean anything, right? But uh, well, a function's extreme values can occur only at critical points. And end points, because the definition of critical point set a point in the interior of the domain. If the domain is from negative 4 up to 6, if you draw any kind of a function between 4 and 6, if you do something like that, then the extreme values have to be at critical points, which would be there and there. If there are no critical points in between there, if it just goes like that, 
then the extreme values have to be at the end points. Okay? The end points aren't critical points. Critical points are in the interior, in between those two. Not every so while a function's extreme values occur at critical points and endpoints, not every critical or endpoint signals the presence of an extreme value, right? We've already seen this. X cubed looks like this, depending on the window you choose. Try again. Let's try again for a third time. X cubed has a horizontal tangent in the middle, so it looks something like that. Cube root of X or X to the one third looks like this. Maybe if you drew it better than I did. This has a horizontal tangent in the middle there. This has a vertical tangent. Y prime equals zero at X equals zero but not, a, not an extreme value, right? So by the definition of critical point, that's a critical point, but not an extreme value, right? Maybe I'll word that better, the way I said it, not the way I wrote it. So what I'm saying is here is this is a critical point, but not an extreme value. And then this over here, y prime is undefined. Same thing, right? So both of these are critical points, but not... I mean, they're, when you're looking for them, they, they're points that you find. Places where the derivative is undefined or zero. This is the same, right? Both of these are critical points, but not extreme values. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. This is... If you draw a picture of this, this is kind of um, geometrically obvious, I guess. If some function is continuous on this closed interval here, then it has to have a maximum and a minimum on that interval. So if you start at one point here, let's call it A, because that's the way it's called over there, and you, you end at some other point here, B, and it's got some value like that, no matter how you draw that, as long as you draw it continuously so that the interval is closed, so it's, it's, there's no undefined points there, then it has to have a maximum or a minimum. If you draw it like this, then the max and min are the end points. If you draw it like this, then there's a maximum up here, and the minimum is that left end point. However you draw it, okay, then it has to have a maximum or minimum somewhere. If you draw it so that it's an open interval, okay, note that it has to say inter a closed interval. An open interval would be if either the end points are open, right? An open interval means either the end points are open like this, because then you can then you can have no max or min. You can go like that, and then and there's no maximum or minimum. Let's draw them farther apart so you see. All right, if this went kind of like that, there's no maximum or minimum. Or if it was if it was open, as in a, something in between was undefined, like if this went like this, then that's not a that's not a closed interval, because it's undefined at a certain point in the middle. A closed interval means it's defined for every single point in that in that range of values there. Okay, so it has to be a closed interval, not an open interval. That's sort of obvious if you try and draw the pictures, right? At this point, it would be a good idea if you did some practice out of the book before next time, but... Um, I, I'm not sure if you did every one of these questions back here or if you did this one. But if you were to graph that one, let me stop this and then we'll...